that are said there is a set of common intranet functionality regardless of organizational size, vertical, location, or industry that we think can be put, that can be created in a better way. So what we found ourselves doing as a consulting company is always building the same types of components. I don't know how many times we can tell, tell you that we build weather web parts or news web parts or events or employee directories. What we've tried to do with Bonsai is really to shake up the intranet space by creating a best of breed intranet product that sits on top of SharePoint, whether that's SharePoint on-prem, SharePoint in the private cloud, or coming soon to Office 365. We believe that the Bonsai intranet product is not only a great intranet solution on SharePoint, but is a fantastic intranet solution overall. And one of the things that we want to do is to really to get Bonsai to change the way that people think about intranet solutions out there in the enterprise. So instead of having to go and get custom intranet solutions created, we feel that Bonsai provides the majority of the capabilities from an intranet perspective for the majority of organizations straight out of the box. And like me and Denise said, we're really excited to be able to share some of these things with you today. And now for the housekeeping. Um, so if you are on um, the Twitterverse and you want to tweet about this webinar or if you want to reach out to us on Twitter, uh, you can tweet about us. Uh, use the hashtag uh, Bonsai Webinar. Um, you can also email us at info at bonsaiintranet.com following this webinar to ask any questions that you may have or visit us on our website. If you're interested in a personalized demo um, after this to go a little bit more in depth into the features, uh, you may fill out a demo request directly from the website as well. Yep. And, and, as, and as, as Denise said, you know, we want to make Bonsai a great product. So any type of feedback people have, any types of ideas that you have or any questions, we really encourage you to reach out to us. And um, we love engaging with both our clients and anyone else out there because it just makes a better product for us overall. Okay, so let's begin. Let's talk about a little bit of what Bonsai is. But before we do that, I'd like to take a step backwards and maybe talk about some of the current options that you have if you're trying to build a really amazing intranet on the SharePoint platform. And this really applies regardless of whether you're uh, building it on Office 365, on SharePoint 2013, or on SharePoint 2010. Now currently there's a number of options available if you're going to build an intranet. The first is going down the custom route. So this is the typical way that organizations currently build intranets on SharePoint, where you're either doing custom in-house development or you're getting a consulting company to come in and create a customized solution for you. If you've been through this process before, you know that this can be a little bit expensive. It can also be fairly risky and the timelines as well can be quite long. The next option that we see out there is this option of creating or buying a template which gives you a visual uh, aesthetic to your intranet and then also buying additional web parts for additional intranet capabilities. So maybe I buy a design of the internet from a company and then I put in additional web parts for common intranet capabilities. Maybe I buy a news web part, a weather web part, uh, a stock ticker web part and I put them all together to create an intranet solution. Now this approach as well we've seen work before uh, but one of the issues that we find is because that you're only skinning SharePoint, you're only putting a visual aesthetic on the platform, you're not really putting in any business logic or any additional capabilities that you need from an intranet perspective. The other thing that we see as well is because you're buying web parts from different vendors, you can have a bit of a mismatch of user experience between different parts of the intranet. And then the last thing that we have as well is just going and buying a SharePoint alternative. And strangely enough, there is many, many intranet companies out there uh, that really create intranets specifically because creating or buying an intranet on SharePoint is really, really difficult. So these are the current three options. And we were, when we were looking to create Bonsai, we wanted to give people another option. And we really believe that Bonsai is that. So what exactly is Bonsai? So Bonsai is a ready-to-roll intranet for Microsoft SharePoint 2013 or coming soon for Office 365. What we've tried to do with Bonsai is to give people the common set of capabilities that an intranet will need, an amazing user experience, but also enough flexibility so that you can customize Bonsai to your own organization. So as opposed to being a template which just has a visual aesthetic, we've tried to put in additional business logic within Bonsai as well 
to make it useful. One of the things that we'll go through soon is our events module, when we've given users or organizations the ability to do basic events management through Bonsai. What we feel that Bonsai represents is kind of a new era in intranets for SharePoint because not only can you get an intranet up and running really, really quickly, you also have an amazing user experience. And really what we've found, and if you look at the research, is that within most organizations across the globe, regardless of size, regardless of vertical, or regardless of industry, most of those common intranet capabilities are pretty much exactly the same. Every intranet is going to have news components, events, uh, policies, being able to store documents, an employee directory, weather. What we're finding is that even though every organization thinks they're very, very unique, there's a common set of capabilities that all organizations share. And that's what we've tried to do with Bonsai. We've tried to give users the 80% of core intranet functionality that you need, but also give you, enough cap give you enough flexibility with Bonsai to customize the 20% that's unique to you. And some of those customizations may be things like custom branding, maybe it's integration with third-party systems, maybe it's specific apps for a specific business purpose. But in terms of core internet capabilities, Bonsai is going to get you up and running really, really quickly for very low cost. So in our opinion, here are the main benefits of Bonsai. It contains internet features that are common to all organizations, like, like Michael just mentioned. We know this because of personal experiences with previous projects and going through tons of published research materials that are out there, either through Norman Nielsen or Step 2 uh, out of Australia. We also have new features um, added regularly to Bonsai. Um, and this is based on really user feedback, people that are using the product, giving us really helpful feedback about what is working for them and what's not. And so the product only gets better and better. The modules that we've built, we made sure that it's very, very easy to configure and extend. Each one of our modules are easy to configure and it's fully extendable for reuse in other parts of the internet. So there's no concept of web parts or functionality built specifically for one area. And you're going to see this a lot uh, if you've gone through uh, SharePoint um, you know, uh, internet projects before, you'll see that some web parts are only available or only usable on the home page, for example. Of course, there's also the beautiful design and user experience. So one of our main goals when building Bonsai is to make sure it doesn't look like SharePoint. Uh, we've worked with user experience designers and experts to make sure it's easy to use and it highlights each piece of functionality in the right way. While we love SharePoint for all its many capabilities, it's also not the most attractive or intuitive in an internet scenario and we recognize that. And as Michael mentioned before, it provides you with 80% of your internet needs on day one. So the moment you install Bonsai, you have the core features you need to get started. And last but not least, um, from the architecture and development perspective, we didn't take anything away from SharePoint. We made sure we kept the integrity of SharePoint platform, which means you still have all of the out-of-the-box capabilities that the SharePoint publishing has to offer. It's a very, very powerful platform, and we would want to make sure that we do it justice by highlighting the key capabilities that it has and not take anything away from you in terms of, you know, future maintainability and extensibility. We continue to make sure that each one of our features leverages the power and benefits of SharePoint and not reinvent the wheel when we don't need to. In terms of the base bonsai features, we have, um, so these are the base features that you'll get, and this is what we're going to go through as well in today's demo. Um, so you have a news module, uh, you have an events management module, you have spotlights for employees, and you also have the ability to spotlight other things if you want. In our example, we're spotlighting employees in the organization. Uh, you have a weather forecast, uh, and it's configurable per person, so if you want to select a different city, uh, you want to see what the weather is like up in Whistler or somewhere else, you can do so. Uh, it's stock ticker, of course. Um, important links where you can feature across the internet, so little quick links um, and, and links to external systems or other applications within your organization. And an improved content authoring experience. So in addition to making it very user friendly for uh, the end user, we made sure it's very user friendly uh, for the content author. 
Uh, the ability to like and comment on content that is posted on the intranet. And many of our features actually leverages the powerful SharePoint search engine. So you get the benefits of the product um, and surface information stored within Bonsai. Uh, you get an employee directory where you can search by a person's name, uh, by their expertise and their role. And you know, based on what you have stored in, in your active directory, we can configure this search experience for you as well. Um, a location directory where, we, where you can list all of your office offices or plants or sites based on the types of locations you have in your organization. Um, you have a mega navigation that's very popular that supports multiple levels of, of your information architecture. A fast footer um, on the bottom uh, where you can add ne the necessary links for a secondary navigation purposes. Uh, you have document web parts that show your documents stored in SharePoint rolled up in a very uh, clean and user-friendly way. Uh, last but not least, you have the custom Bonsai web parts for each one of these components. And these web parts can then be used across anywhere in Bonsai. So as you can see, even the base Bonsai product is very, very feature rich. So just in case the base features are not enough, you do have the flexibility to add additional features or purchase them additionally. So you have the marketplace, this is very, very popular. You can sell, buy, list goods and services. So it's a, kind of like a company Craigslist. Uh, it's very popular. It's probably one of our most popular add-ons uh, for Bonsai. A site directory. So a lot of you who are using SharePoint have a lot of teams, team sites and project sites. So this site directory provides you a very, very clean, very uh, quick, great, and, and great user experience in, in terms of searching for this uh, for your team sites and project sites. Uh, a photo gallery where you can post albums and photos from recent company events. Um, and a very robust document portal where you can search for many of the uh, documents you have within the organization, such as policies, procedures, forms, uh, reports. Um, and we've recently added this as well, uh, which is multilingual support. So we have a lot of clients that need their intranet to eventually support multiple languages, whether it's English and French or English and Spanish. Uh, we've, we've built this in recently. So the Bonsai offering, the Bonsai offering has two sides to it. So the very first one I just went through, so which is the, the SharePoint software uh, or the Bonsai SharePoint software. The other side of the coin, we have the Bonsai delivery framework. So in addition uh, to the product, we have a delivery framework that will assist you through the planning, the implementation, and the rollout of your intranet. And as part of the delivery framework, uh, we have a lot of processes, we have a lot of documentation, and we actually have a lot of checkpoints that is required when implementing Bonsai. So it's one thing to have you know, the features that you need, but how do you get this going? How do you plan for an internet project? How do you make sure it's implemented well? And how do you make sure that it's rolled out correctly? So we guide you through the project lifecycle from start to finish. Um, and just like any, and just like the product, this pro this framework is in continually evolves uh, as we learn more, um, and and with each implementation we go through, uh, this ensures that the experience is seamless for you and repeatable and reliable for us. Uh, so this framework includes, you know, identifying some vision and success, requirements gathering. Uh, obviously, there's project management uh, that goes along with it. Information architecture visual design if you need a new brand, for example. Uh, governance, uh, governance is a really big one. So how do you ensure that uh, uh, you have all the governance uh, um, checkpoints for your intranet? Uh, content audit, authoring and migration, rollout planning. Uh, we have also technical documentation um, and also do a little bit of an assessment of your infrastructure readiness on, on your SharePoint platform. And that's a really good point, Denise, because as we talked about, I don't think it's possible to have a generic intranet with the same information architecture that's going to work across all organizations. But one of the things that we feel Bonsai allows us to do is to instead, instead of spending time on costly, costly custom development efforts, to really focus on that 20% that's going to provide organizations value. And for many organizations, that's not even the technology. That is things like governance, ensuring that the information architecture makes sense and is tested, or even making sure that you have executive buy-in through having a vision 
and some success metrics around your intranet as well. So this Bonsai Delivery Framework is really the consulting piece that comes around Bonsai. And both of these things together, we feel create a really amazing intranet. So now that we've talked a little bit about what Bonsai is and a little bit about the philosophy around Bonsai, why don't we jump into a demo because I know that a lot of people are itching to see what Bonsai looks like and what it can do. So here is a fictitious company called Bank Group. Now Bank Group is uh, our own kind of banking organization that we've developed for this demo. Bank Group has multiple branches and banks around the world. They run their intranet on SharePoint 2013 and we've developed a, a Bank Group bonsai for them. So the first thing that you can see is the home page. And if I slowly scroll down here so GoToMeeting catches up, we have some fairly typical intranet capabilities starting from the top. So the first thing that we have is this concept of weather and stocks. Very typical intranet capabilities uh, common on all, in, common on all in intranets. One of the things that we do allow you to do within Bonsai is to light up features on and off. So for instance, if you're a public company and you don't have any stocks, I can simply remove this and it's not going to uh, appear here. Another great example I think about some of the user experience that we've thought about within Bonsai is in terms of our weather module. So what you can do as, a, as an admin, you can target weather to specific people. But the other thing that you can do as well is any user can customize their weather to a particular location. So say for instance I'm currently in Vancouver, but I'm going to go back to my hometown of uh, back to my hometown of Adelaide, if I can spell it properly here. There we go. In South Australia, Bonsai allows you to choose any weather location around the world. So I'm going to choose Adelaide, South Australia. I want to see it in Celsius, and I click on save now the weather gets automatically updated to see the weather in Adelaide, which unfortunately is typically, if not always, much, much better than it is here in Vancouver. The other thing we have going down at the top is our mega navigation menu. So what we've tried to do with Bonsai is to go down the approach of having a mega nav. This is very much in line with intranet best practices and allows you to expose information in a much cleaner fashion than having a very deep nested source of structure. Once again, we're not going to go through, through this demo, but all of this is fully configurable from the amount of navigation items you have to the depth that you have as well. So this mega navigation way really allows your users or allows you to surface content on your intranet quickly and easily. The first thing that we can see when someone jumps onto Bank Group though is this bright red bar. And this is our important messages module. In intranets commonly, one of the big outcomes that organizations would like to achieve is to reduce the reliance on email. Now our important messages model, module allows us to do this by allowing an organization to put in a message and have it really prominently displayed on the front page of their intranet. So for bank group, for instance, I can see that server maintenance is going to be happening uh, fairly, fairly soon. If this, uh, if this isn't here, obviously all of the content moves up and I have a bunch of different configuration options for the important messages module. I can specify how long it should stay up for, I can specify a criticality which gives me different colors and different icons as well. But a very simple thing from an intranet to be able to have you know, a really bright important message on, 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 on the homepage and we support all of that. Going down now, we have our typical intranet components. So for Bank Group, they have obviously their featured news. We have a featured slider here, which is available through Bonsai, which shows us all of the typical news information that we would like to see. The title of the news article, the date, the, uh, the news article type, any sort of social capabilities and, 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 and read more, which we'll go to. On the right here as well, we have another very important piece of functionality is our links module. Bank Group has a number of different sites that they want their employees to, to, to access. And what they've done, they've used our important links module, they've called it Popular Resources, which essentially allows you to put in commonly accessed links for employees. The nice thing with Bonsai now is not only can you have a standardized set of links for all employees, but you can also target links or target news or content to employees um, based on a user profile data. 
So for instance, if I know that my employee or one of my users is from a particular location or has a particular job role, I can target content specific to them out of the box with Bonsai. So if we go down a little bit on, uh, on Bank Group here, we have obviously our homepage with our slider, our important links. Now the next row that we have here is more around the news and events. So we have some other recently published news here. We have any comments that are associated with any of these news items and any likes. An employee can once again quickly go and click through any of these items and we support paging and everything else really, really quickly. The other thing that we have is our events module. So I'm going to go through this because this is one of the things that I think we're, we're really, really proud of. Um, we've built an events module within Bonsai, which I think is provides really great additional capabilities uh, in terms of just the normal standard SharePoint calendar events. So we've got capabilities like being able to add a map to an event or being able to like an event or even do basic event management through attendees. On our right here, we have another module, which is our employee spotlight module. So the employee spotlight module was really another type of news. You know, some organizations have a very formal intranet where you have very formal types of news, but also a lot of organizations want to spotlight particular good deeds or employees to promote things like employee engagement. Our employee spotlight module allows us to create stories around employees that can focus on any kind of good, good deeds that employees may do. Then going down to the bottom here as well, we've got more of the document related or web content type of things. Our recently updated FAQs is an area within Bonsai that Bank Group has developed that has a bunch of frequently asked questions which are written in very much a task driven format. And what we can do in Bonsai, we can create all of these FAQs, but we automatically on the home page roll up the most recently updated FAQs. So when an employee goes onto here, they can quickly see if any FAQs have been up updated. Finally, the last two things is we have our popular forms area. So once again, we have uh, Bonsai supports any type of content that SharePoint supports as well. So we have a range of forms here which employees can, can, can click through. And if you see as I'm clicking through, one of the nice things that we've done is not only given people the name of the form, but also we have the type here. So we have our own custom icons here for different types of forms, whether they be PDF, Word, uh, or Excel, or any other, uh, other type. Feedback is obviously really important as well. So we have a feedback module. Now we'll talk about the, the couple of different types of feedback that we have within Bonsai. But we have the concept of what we call social feedback, which is, uh, uh, which is feedback like commenting and liking. But we also have more private feedback. So this is in the occasion where maybe I'm an intranet user and I want to submit you know, a private piece of feedback to the intranet team. I can do that through this provide your feedback module. And then going down here as well, we have our employee marketplace. Now, strangely enough, uh, for many organizations that, that, that we've seen, this concept of an employee marketplace, this buying and selling of items within, uh, within the organization is really, really popular. We've created an employee marketplace that we think is both functional and really beautiful, but it also helps engage employees. And one of the questions we often get asked is why is the marketplace on the bottom? if that's what uh, a lot of people want to use on their, their intranet. Well, the reason that we put the marketplace on the bottom is that so people have to scroll down the rest of the news articles uh, to, to, to see it. But saying that, because Bonsai is configurable, I can move all of these web parts around and I can have the marketplace in a different area or not at all. And finally, down the bottom here, we have our Bonsai bat footer. So what we've tried to do with Bonsai is give you multiple ways to expose your information architecture out on your intranet. So not only do we have the concept of the mega nav, which could be based for more navigation, but once again, we have this concept of a fat footer. And the fat footer allows you to essentially put in any links that are categorized and have them displayed consistently on the bottom of your homepage. Very much in line with intranet best practices and very much in line in what's happening in the internet space there as well. So if I scroll up here, <clears throat> Let's go to a news article within Bonsai. So let's go to this becoming a trusted advisor news article here. So the first thing I'm going to see is, first of all, as you can see, Bonsai looks nothing like traditional SharePoint. And there's a really good reason for that. We've tried to work with user experience designers. We've tried to work with visual designers as well to make an intranet product that we think is really engaging and really beautiful. So as we go through our Bonsai, you're going to see that you know, this is not only surface deep in terms of how the branding looks and feels, 
but is really woven throughout the entire product. So one of the things that we can see now on this particular article is uh, I've got the featured image here. I've got the uh, I, I've got common news information, the date, the title, when it was published. I can also see who it was posted by as well. One of the nice things we do with Bonsai as well is we've got full link integration as well. So if I can go and uh, if I'm if these people are actually logged into Link, I'm actually going to see the Link Jelly Bean uh, three here as well. Obviously, I've got the news story here, and once again, because we're built on out of the box SharePoint, I can actually see and I can actually edit content and see all of these items uh, here as as uh, as well. On the right hand side within Bonsai, we have this concept of this right hand side action bar. And what the right-hand side action bar does, it allows users to perform specific types of actions, whether they're liking content, whether they're commenting on content. Um, the other thing that we have as well is this concept of contacts and related links. Now, I know what you guys are asking as well. You guys, you told me that there's social capabilities here within Bonsai, that there's commenting and liking. So where does this appear on the page? If I go back to the home page and I go back to another article, so let's go to this Wall Street Journal reviews of estate planning here as well. We can see now that we have these social capabilities lit up in terms of comments and in terms of likes. Now, the thing that we've done with Bonsai is as we've talked to organizations, we're trying to get into a more of a social intranet uh, type of model where they want to engage users through things like comments and things like like. We see there's really a couple of different types of organizations. On, the, on one side, there's organizations that want to go fully social. So they're more than willing to have employees author content anywhere, have liking and commenting turned on everywhere. On the other side, we see organizations that don't want any social capabilities in their intranet at all. They're not currently um, equipped or they're not currently comfortable with allowing their end users to comment on news articles or like or share content. But there's also a big gap in the middle. And one of the things that we've done with Bonsai, which I really like, is we allow you to light up social capabilities on a per item basis within Bonsai. So I'll give you an example. Maybe I create a news article which is very positive, and I want to give users the ability to like and unlike and comment on, on content. I can do that with Bonsai. Conversely, maybe I create another type of article where, where it's not so positive, and I don't want users to be able to like that. What I can do within Bonsai, I can actually go and edit that page, and I can choose to have those social capabilities turned on or off on an item-by-item -item basis, which is really, really powerful. In terms of the social capabilities, like I said, if I hover over this like button, I can like and unlike content, and you can see that everything is done in real time here. This like button, uh, this like count is going uh, uh, is going to update. The other thing that I have as well is if I click on my comments bar, I can actually see that there's two comments within here. From a commenting perspective, we have a number of different types of social integration with Bonsai that come out of the box. So the first thing that we have is our own commenting engine. So if I put a comment here, so hello, Bonsai webinar, oops, webinar and post. I have, uh, we have our own commenting engine here, here as well. We also offer full integration with Yammer. Now, once again, the reason that we did this is we have some clients which can store data out in the cloud and they have Yammer installed, but other clients that don't have Yammer and they want to use some on-premise social capabilities which we have uh, offered within Bonsai. Now, if we go back to this page once again, <coughs> excuse me, we can see we have Obviously, our right-hand uh, actions bar, we have our contacts here, and we have our re related links. Now, as Denise said, we've also tried to make sure that we make the authoring experience as easy as possible for our end users as well. So I'm going to go and edit this page, and you're going to see that this looks a little bit different than the traditional SharePoint editing experience. Now, you have to forgive the ribbon for being a little bit funky here. It's just the resolution that I'm, that I'm running. But what we've tried to do with Bonsai is instead of the traditional SharePoint model where we have one single page with a bunch of metadata at the top and a bunch of web part zones, we've tried to simplify this content authoring process. So every piece of web content that you author within Bonsai goes in this tab-like model. So if I'm creating a news article as an end user, 
I have a bunch of metadata that I have to fill in. The title, the author, the publish date, the category, the byline, the roll-up image, whether it's featured or not, and page contacts as well, which you saw that we render out nicely on the right-hand side. So as a user, I go in and I fill in my metadata. The next thing that we have is the actual page content area. And what we've tried to do, we've tried to make this easy as possible for users. So we've removed all of these web part zones and we've really given people one nice, clear white surface to be able to author their content on. Now I can put in web parts in here. I can use any of the inbuilt SharePoint styles. Um, I, I can use whatever I like. But what I would, but, but, but what I can do is make it really, really easy for people. We've found that from an end user perspective, especially when we're training new users on authoring content on SharePoint, having to add web parts first before they author content and having web part zones gets a little bit confusing for them. The next thing that we have is our related links. So a user can put in related links and up to six on the bottom right hand side and we render that out as well. And then we have this option of page options and I talked about this before but for any option within Bonsai or any piece of content within Bonsai. I have the ability to, whether I want to show comments, whether I want to show likes, or whether I want to show contacts. Once again, it gives you the flexibility as an organization to be able to choose whether you want to enable some of these social features uh, or, or not. And that's pretty much it. So if I've done some changes, I'm going to click on publish, publish, publish. I'm going to publish this out. And once again, we render all of this content, content out for you. So here are our contacts, and we render our contacts out nicely in these uh, nice round icons. Um, these photos are taken from their, their profile. I've got a link to their my site as well. I've got my related links area. I've got all of my social tools. I've got everything else that I need here as well. Nice and easy, very typical intranet capa capability. The next thing that I want to talk about is uh, I'm going to skip events. I'm going to come back to it. But I want to talk about some of our directories. Because if you know from an internet perspective, one of the most common things that people are going to do is going to look for employees. Um, everyone has had the occasion on their internet that we're trying to look for someone who's trying to answer a, a question. So this is our employee directory module within Bonsai. And this is one of the things I think we're really, really proud of in terms of how we develop this and some of the really great user experience around this. So as opposed to the out of the box SharePoint search in 2013, if I go to people and I don't really see anyone, the first thing that you're going to see when you land on the Bonsai employee directory is a list of all people within your organization. And I can easily filter people starting with a first name like G or E or F and you can see how quick and snappy this is as, um, uh, as well. So we can filter by first name or last name. If I click on all here, I'm going to go back and see all, all, of our, all of our people. Now, one of the things that we found when we were speaking to our end users is when someone's looking for someone within an organization, um, they're looking to get in touch with them in, 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 in somehow. One of the things that SharePoint 2013 out of the box doesn't do particularly well is if I go and I search for a person, in order for me to find out more details about them, in particular contact details, I have to go to their profile or their, their, their my site. Now, I do have that ability within Bonsai. If I click on Adam's, uh, uh, Adam's name here, I'm going to be taken to their my site. But what we've done from a user experience perspective is if I click on this little icon here, I get all of the common... Uh, types of information that I need to get in contact with Adam. So for instance, I have his email address, I have his phone, and I have his cell phone here. Once again, this all comes from the user profile. Not only that, we've made these active links, for instance. So if I click on one of these, depending on what type of tool I want to use, whether I want to use Link or Skype, um, I can go and find them really, really easily. So once again, we've tried to make it really, really easy to find people. However, the other thing that I want to do is maybe I'm searching for a particular person. Now, this is by far one of my most favorite features within Bonsai. And it's something that I feel should be in all SharePoint, in, in, in all SharePoint intranets. And we're trying to weave this experience more throughout Bonsai. And that experience is a type ahead search experience. If I start searching anywhere within Bonsai, I'm going to get a beautiful type ahead search experience. So I'll give you an example. I'm going to start typing in people's names. And you can see as I type them, I actually get an autocomplete there ready for them. So it makes it really, really easy for me to find people. The other thing that we do as well, we don't only show you their names, but we show you their location. We also show you their, their job title, and we also show you their profile picture. And one of the reasons that we do that 
is sometimes you want to be able to find someone because you know their name, but other times you might want to look for someone because you know their face. So that all helps with that, with, with, with that as well. And not only can I search for people through the search box by their name, for instance, but I can search for them by any particular piece of information they have within their profile. So maybe I have someone's phone number, but I don't know who they are. I can start typing in their phone number. So let's look at Adam's here, 753, and automatically Adam comes up because our search capabilities not only crawl their first name, their last name, and their skills, but anything within their profile. I think it makes for a really beautiful search experience. But not only that, we give you this kind of search experience for anything. So say, say for instance, I know that I'm in bank group and I'm searching for a financial analyst. It's something to do with finance, but I don't really know the role. Once again, if I just start typing that in, automatically we try to do an autocomplete for you within Bonsai. So, okay, yeah, I am searching financial analyst. I just click that, press enter, and I get all of the people back in my organization that are financial analysts. Now, the nice thing with the Bonsai as well is in terms of these elements here, in terms of the location or the role or the skill, this is fully configurable by our customers. So we have some organizations that put in languages here, for instance, because what they do, they want to be able to find employees by language, or maybe they want to find employees by the number of years of service. All of this is configurable within Bonsai, which makes it a really, really nice ex experience. But there's also another type of directory that organizations have. So we're looking for people, but also maybe you're looking for what we call locations. And once again, we did our research and we spoke to a bunch of customers and what we found was the concept of a location as a physical place can be used in slightly different uh, contexts depending on your organization. So we have what we call our location directory module. Now, if I click on bank group locations here, these are bank groups office locations. So if I click onto here and we scroll down the bottom here, what we do is we have a bunch of physical locations here. So we have common location-based metadata, the physical map address, the phone number, the fax, the email, and the opening hours. Now, say for instance, I want to know more information about the New York office, I can click on this as well. And once again, I get a really nice page with all of my social capabilities here and I can put any additional content that I like on this location page. But what we found as well when we're deploying Bonsai to our customers is that not only were they using the location module for uh, office locations, they started using it for other types of things as well. So Bank Group, for instance, has branches, obviously, because it's a bank. So they use the same location directory module, but now they use it as a branch directory as well. We have mining clients that are using this location directory module for things like my sites. Uh, sorry, for things like mine sites as, uh, as well. So once again, it's the example of a bonsai capability built out of best practices that can be used in multiple different ways for an organization. Now if we go back to the homepage here, the last thing that I'm going to cover really, really quickly is our events module. And let me go to this financial planning seminar here. Um, this is once again the result of you know a ton of research and a ton of thinking that we have done. But I'm sure everyone who has a SharePoint internet could probably, probably relate to the story I'm about to tell. A lot of organizations want to be able to manage events through their intranet. And when you're on SharePoint, obviously you have your SharePoint calendar. Now the problem is, is that if I'm the organizer of an event, I'll put it into the SharePoint calendar, and then that's pretty much it. Like, I can't really attach an additional information. There's no way for people to ask me questions. But the biggest thing is, is that there's no real way to see who's going to be going to my event or if they're interested unless they actually email me. So what we try to, and, and because of that, what we've seen in a lot of organizations is that, you know, the poor end user has to create an event, put it up on their intranet, but they also have to then send another event, uh, send another um, Outlook email invite as well. So they're essentially doing two, two, two different things. Now what we've tried to do with Bonsai is to create a pretty simple piece of events management functionality that's modeled on some of the kind of SaaS providers that do events management. And really, we looked at Meetup really, really closely. And Meetup's a really great site that allows you to manage, manage events. So let me, take, so let me take, take you through this. This is an example of 
an event. So we're having a financial planning seminar. We've got common event-based information. So we've got the date, the location. We've got all of our content here as well. We've got a map and direction here. We've got contacts. We've got a number of attendees here. And we have all of our social capabilities through here as well in terms of comments. Now, I'm going to go and edit this event here just to show you that creating an event is just as easy as creating any other type of, type of uh, item within Monza where I fit in my metadata here so I have my name, my byline, my category. But there's a couple of things, there's a couple of things that I want to draw your attention to. So the first one is this requires attendance response. And what this gives us, if you have this enabled, it's some pretty amazing event management capabilities which I'll go through. But the other thing that we have is this Google Map location as well. Now, if you saw the Google Map previously, and I'll go through that again in just a moment, what we do is you put in a Google Map location here, and we automatically generate a Google Map for you. But the other thing that you might want is more of a generic event location description here, which we allow you to do as well. Obviously, start date and end time, the event time, which is more of a human readable sort of format. The other thing that we do as well, which is quite nice, is to enable you to put in a time zone. Because if you're a company that has organizations uh, or a company that has offices distributed around the world, I can put in an event on my intranet but without putting in a time zone. What's going to happen is people are going to get confused in terms of what time it is as well. And we have our event contacts here as well. So same sort of authoring experience. I fill in my metadata. I fill in my event details as well. And I can tell you that I am no resident financial planning expert, so please do not come to me with financial planning advice. Um, but I can put in my event details. I can put in related links. I've got my page options as well. So very typical, very uh, streamlined authoring experience. Now, if I go and publish this event again, publish, 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 and I continue here as well, a couple of things that are going to happen. Now, once again, we've got all of our information of this event about the top. We've got all of our comments. If you remember that Google Map location that we had previously, we generate that Google Map for you. This is actually where we're coming from, live from, from our office. We also have our related links, and we have our contacts here. The most interesting thing that we've found, though, is this. So when I was creating that event, if you saw I had an option that said requires attendance response. Now, if you have that enabled, as I did within this event, we get this will you join us thing come up. Now, the idea behind this is if and I'm an end user, I go and I see this page and I say, actually, this is an event that I'm interested in attending. And all I'll do is I can click on no, I can't make it, or yes, I'll be there. Now, I'll draw your attention to just down the bottom here, because what we're going to do, as soon as I click in yes, I'll be there, in real time, we're going to start generating a list of attendees. I'm going to click it now, and you can see that just under the contacts here, a list of attendees is generated. So what we've found for someone that's managing event, this is great. All of a sudden now they see they can see a list of attendees that are going to be coming to their event. It gives them additional capabilities much uh, you know, over and above Share, SharePoint. However, the other thing that we found is when we talked to our end users, they actually said, well, it's good that I can see all of these attendees, but how do I get in contact with them? So the other thing that we do as well is we light up this Tools button. And what this does, if I click on this, we automatically generate an email for you that has all of the email addresses of all of the people in the attendees list. All of a sudden, this, attend this, this uh, event entry becomes useful. Because now what people can do, you can start using it to manage events. Now, I have all of my typical event capabilities. And I can also export this to my calendar. Because in the end, what we do is we use those native SharePoint 2013 calendar capabilities, but we just expose it in a really, really nice interface. Now, in the next version of Bonsai, Bonsai 1.2, um, we're making enhancements to this because we were speaking to a client, and they were using this events module extensively. But they said to us, you know, what I want to do, I want to use this events module not just for corporate events, but I want to start using it for training. But the problem with, uh, with training events is, I only have a set number of people. So I would like to have the ability of when I create an event to specify a maximum number of attendees for that event. And then once I get over that maximum number of attendees, they go into some waiting list. Now, we thought this was an absolutely brilliant idea. And it's coming out in uh, Bonsai 1.2. So what's going to happen now, when you create an event, you can specify a maximum number of attendees now. So not only can you have corporate events, but you can start using it for things like lunch and learns, for things like training. 
And this is an example, I think, and it's a really good story of what we're trying to do with Bonsai, where if we hear about amazing features or really good ideas, we're going to roll them back into the Bonsai platform, and all of our, uh, all of our Bonsai users are going to get the benefits and the wisdom of uh, everyone's new features. But as you can tell, this module in particular I, I really like because it's a really beautiful user experience. It actually makes these events capabilities within SharePoint useful. Um, and you know, for a lot of our users that currently have uh, Bonsai, they're using this events capabilities uh, pretty considerably. So that's a bit of a quick overview. Um, obviously, there's a ton more features within Bonsai. We haven't talked about many things like being able to configure documents or the portal. Um, you know, even the employee marketplace. Actually, let's go into that now because this is another thing that I really, really like and I think uh, is really, really nice. So Denise talked about previously about this concept of an employee marketplace, allowing employees to buy, sell, and give away items. Once again, we've developed this marketplace in a way that makes it really easy for users to be able to put in content, but also makes it really, really beautiful. So uh, for those of you that have an employee marketplace, which is just a static SharePoint list, I think you'll, you'll see that this is a little bit, little bit different. The same thing again, if I start searching for anything, I get this really beautiful type ahead search experience. If I click onto one of these items, so say for instance, I'm really interested in firewood, and I am going to be interested in firewood because it's Vancouver, it's going to get cold. Um, I can see, you know, one of these items, I've got this common action bar, I can get in contact with the seller as well, I've got common information here. If I want to enter in one of these marketplace items, what we've done is we've made it really easy for end users to be able to add these items. They can choose a category, for instance, uh, so if it's for sale, I have a price, if it's giveaway, obviously there's no price. I can choose whether, uh, when items expire, the status, I can upload photos all of these sorts, sorts of things, and then essentially you've got this really beautiful marketplace type of experience. Now, this doesn't come with the standard Bonsai package. This is an additional add-on module. But once again, what we're trying to do with Bonsai is build these additional add-on, build these additional add-on modules, which are more based around specific verticals around an, in, uh, around an in, intranet. So marketplace is the first one. Photo gallery is going to be the second one. Once again, it's going to be really beautiful, really easy for people to see photos, tag photos, comment on photos, and we're building a really beautiful site directory experience as well. So that is a very quick view, a uh, very quick overview of Bonsai Intranet for SharePoint. Like I said, there's a ton more here, um, but I've always, you know, I could probably talk for the next four hours about uh, uh, about Bonsai. But I know Denise that we have some some questions as uh, as well. So thank you for those. So maybe we should uh, we should answer a couple of them. Sure. Um, so thank you, Michael, for that great overview of Bonsai. So we did have a few questions roll in while you were talking. Uh, the very first one that came in was around the commenting functionality that you showed in the very beginning. Um, they asked, how am I informed of a comment on my news article? That's a great, great question. Exactly. So what happens within Bonsai is that if I'm specified as an author of a news article, we automatically generate an email to say that, um, that a comment has taken place. So we do have, now once again, um, as an author, you can choose to be notified, or sometimes you don't. Uh, you don't want to be notified, especially if you're a communications team, for instance. You don't want to be notified of every single comment. But we do have that ability within Bonsai of once someone puts in a comment, you're going to get sent an email saying, "Mike Bustarik has commented on uh, on this particular article or on this particular piece of content." Um, thank you for that. So another question we had was around uh, the ability to tag discussions or commenting. I guess it's around the commenting functionality uh, that you were showing. Um, is, is there something like that where, where uh, you can tag a certain discussion or maybe tag a certain skill, for example, if I understand the question correctly? Yeah, so uh, can people tag so, so at the moment, so I guess the answer is if you're using our out-of-the-box commenting engine, no. However, if you have Yammer integrated into Bonsai, what would happen is we replace the commenting our commenting engine here with Yammer, and Yammer does give you that ability. It gives you a whole range of more kind of social capabilities in terms of in terms of being able to uh, like 
this question says tagging discussions by skill. Hashtag, Isn't creating it? groups, all that stuff. All that sort of stuff, yeah. So out of the box with our native inbuilt social capabilities, no, because they're, you know, they're, they're really great, but they are quite simple. If you go down the option of integrating Yammer into Bonsai, um, what we do is we kind of strip out all of our commenting capabilities, put in Yammer, and then you get the best of Yammer and the best of Bonsai. Thank you for that. Uh, the next question is, does, bonsai, does the Bonsai design extend to team sites? It does, yeah. So what, we've done with, um, so what we've done with Bonsai is, from a SharePoint perspective, uh, our philosophy on this is that the intranet should be very, very highly branded. So as you can see, this doesn't look anything like SharePoint at all. But for team sites, what we do is we actually create a light theme, um, which is basically just colors, um, and it's basically just just colors and a little bit of brand. So we don't change the structure of team team sites. Now the reason that we don't do that is team sites have what's called a fluid layout because it allows people that are using team sites to add additional navigation items, add calendars, add a whole bunch of other things. Um, whereas bonsai is actually a fixed width layout because this is how we can make bonsai look 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 particularly beautiful. So if I am if I am an end user and I go to a team site from bonsai. I do get the light sort of bonsai branding, um, but once again, we try to keep that branding fairly light because in that team site environment, it's more around collaboration. We don't want to take anything away from, from that. But what we do do is we give people a link back to their intranet from any team site by one click, and it's usually something like an icon. So if they're on a team site, they're doing their work, if they want to go back to their intranet, for example, they click a button um, and they, they go back to the home page there. So it's the same concept for, for uh, your my site as well, right? So it'll be lightly blind, uh, branded. Exactly, yeah. So we've, and once again, it's a good question. The reason that we've kept both team sites and my sites lightly branded is that what we're finding as well is a lot of clients are moving their team sites or their my sites out into Office 365. And Office 365 really affords us less kind of opportunities to do fancy branding. So we're trying to keep it fairly light and much more functional. Um, but still, you get that same consistent color palette that you would have on your bonsai intranet. Yep. So we have a couple of minutes. Um, there's quite a lot of questions, but I'll pick one of the uh, last ones that came in. Can customers develop and deploy their own web apps or web parts, um, or do they have to come back to us? Great question. No. So one of the things that we've tried to do with bonsai is, because we're a consulting company, um, you know, we've tried to develop Bonsai, like I said, that these are just all out of the box web parts. So if you want to go and add additional web parts or deploy your own to Bonsai, as long as you're building that with Microsoft best practices, that's fine. So for instance, in our Bonsai environment, we have customers that use Bonsai as their intranet base, but they also develop their own web parts that integrate into, in, into Bonsai as well. And the reason that we can do that, and I'll show you that, if I just click on edit page here, this is all just standard SharePoint. Like just in the back end, this is really all standard SharePoint. We have a bunch of different web parts here. And even on the back end here, if I go to site contents here as well, just so you can see, you know, we just use all of those SharePoint capabilities. We don't want to paint you into a corner that every time you need to make a change or every time you need to do anything, you need to come back to us. The idea with Bonsai is that it's a flexible intranet platform. So we give you a range of capabilities out of the box with Bonsai. But if you want to add additional lists, additional libraries, if you want to create and add your own custom web parts, as long as you do that in a supported fashion, uh, we're totally, totally fine with that. So with that, um, we're at time. Thank you so much for those that have uh, dialed in and attended our very first uh, intranet, or Bonsai intranet webinar. There will be many, many more to come. Uh, if you have any questions, again, reach out to us. Um, and we will have this also recorded, um, so you can uh, review it again if you miss something or if you want to share it with other people. Definitely, yeah. So thank you once again for, for spending the hour with us. If you have any questions, um, any, any comments, we, we, we would love to hear them. We really want to you know, create a great, great intranet product on, on, on SharePoint. Um, I think we've got a ton of questions. I think there's probably about 15 questions outstanding. So what we're going to do is we're going to take all of those questions. Uh, we'll do a bit of a blog article as well that's going to answer, answer them. But once again, thank you so much for spending the hour with us, um, and we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you, everyone.